the work and energy in electrostatics. Let us now try to calculate the energy of a continuous charge distribution. But before that, let us try to reformulate the equation for the work done in the case of volume charges, line charges and surface charges. In the case of volume charges with volume charge density rho, W can be written as 1 over 2 integral rho P theta. When it comes to line charges, the same equation can be written as equal to 1 over 2 integral lambda times V dl. With surface charges having surface charge density sigma, the equation for the work done could be written as 1 over 2 integral sigma times V dA. Now, let us try to find a way to write these equations without rho, lambda, sigma or v. We will try to write an equation using the electric field E. From Gauss's law, we can write the charge density rho as equal to epsilon 0 times del dot E. Now, the expression for work done can be written as epsilon 0 over 2 integral del dot E V theta. We can rewrite the integral by using the formula for integration by parts. Accordingly, if we have a volume integral with a function f that multiplies with del dot A theta, this is equal to negative of integral over a volume A dot del F theta plus surface integral f a dot da that is work done is equal to epsilon 0 over 2 negative of integral e dot del v theta plus integral v e dot da within the parenthesis. But we have del v equal to negative of e. And so work done is equal to epsilon 0 over 2 integral e square d2 plus surface integral v e dot da. The first one is a volume integral and the second one is a surface integral. Now, let us inspect these integrals individually. What we have done is that we have brought some charges from infinity. We have assembled them to form a volume charge as you see in this figure. So here, rho is finite. And what the volume integral does is that it calculates integral e square d2, where d2 is a very small volume in the volume charge. The surface integral calculates the integral of V times E over a patch having area dA on the surface of the volume charge. Now, what will happen to these integrals if we extend this small volume to a large one extending over all space? 
So we are considering two regions. Region 1 is where rho is finite and region 2 is where rho is equal to 0. When we extend the volume beyond the minimum necessary to trap all the charges, what the volume integral does is that it divides the whole space into smaller sections having size d2 and thus the integration. Dtos that are inside the volume charge will contribute towards the total integral whereas the dtos which are outside the volume charge will contribute nothing as rho is equal to zero here. Remember that outside the volume charge the electric field E is finite and the volume integral is quadratic in E. That means the integrand is positive and the integral of E square can only increase. So we can predict that as we increase the limit of the integration to extend to a larger volume or a larger space, the volume integral increases. And we can predict that to make W constant as the volume integral increases, the surface integral should decrease. At larger distances from the charge, the electric field goes like 1 over R square and the potential V goes like 1 over R. The surface area grows like R square and the surface integral goes down like 1 over R times 1 over R square times R square that is roughly 1 over R. And for larger and larger volumes, contribution from the volume integral goes still up and that from the surface integral goes down. Therefore, when we integrate over all space, the surface integral goes to zero and we are left with W equal to epsilon zero by two integral E square dito over all space. This is the final equation that we are looking for for the work done in terms of the electric field. Let us now check whether the electrostatic energy obey superposition principle as the electric field E and potential V. We have the work done is given by W total equal to epsilon 0 over 2 integral E square d2. So the total electric field can be written as a sum that is epsilon 0 by 2 integral E1 plus E2. For the time being, we are considering only two fields that is E1 and E2 times D2. When we expand, this is equal to epsilon 0 over 2 integral E1 square plus E2 square plus 2e1 dot e2 times d2. So this can be written as equal to w1 plus w2 plus epsilon 0 integral e1 dot e2 d2. Because electrostatic energy is quadratic in the fields, it does not obey a superposition principle. That means that W total is not equal to W1 plus W2 plus W3 plus etc. That is the energy of a compound system is not the sum of the energies of its parts considered separately. There are these cross terms.
Problem 18. Find the energy of a uniformly charged spherical shell of total charge Q and radius R. We can solve this problem in two methods. In the first method, we can make use of the equation for the work done, which includes the surface charge density sigma and the potential V. In the second method, we can use the expression that contains only the electric field E. So, solution 1. will be to make use of this equation that is w equal to 1 over 2 integral sigma v dA. We know that the potential at the surface of a sphere is v equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0 q over r where r is the radius of the sphere. So that means that the work done is given by 1 over 8 pi epsilon 0 q over r integral sigma dA. So this is equal to 1 over 8 pi epsilon 0 q times q and this is equal to 1 over 8 pi epsilon 0 Q square. We missed an R here. So, this is the final result for the work done. Solution 2 makes use of the expression for work done that involve the electric field. We know that inside a spherical shell, the electric field is zero. And outside the shell, the electric field is given by 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0 q over r square then r hat. So this gives us e square as equal to q square over 4 pi epsilon 0 the whole square times r raised to 4 and the work done that is w total is epsilon 0 over 2 integral e square d2 and this is equal to epsilon 0 over 2 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0 the whole square the integral is outside the spherical shell q square over r raised to 4 times r square sin theta dr d theta and then d phi. So we have integral 0 to 2 pi d phi as equal to 2 pi and the second integral, integral 0 to pi sin theta d theta equal to 2. When we substitute these values, we have the total energy as equal to q square over 32 pi square epsilon 0 times 2 pi times 2 times integral r to infinite 1 over r square dr. This is equal to q square divided by 8 pi epsilon 0 times negative of 1 by r with the limits r and infinity. This is equal to u square divided by 8 pi epsilon 0 times negative of 1 over infinity minus 1 over r and 
this is equal to 1 over 8 pi epsilon 0 times q over r. We find that both the approaches give us the same result.